Everybody shout hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Good morning, everybody. I seize this opportunity to salute the grace of God upon our parents in the Lord, the presiding bishop of the Redeemed Evangelical Mission, Dr. Mike Okonkwo, MFR. I raise my heart for you, sir. He's a man that is not intimidated. He expects that his children will do seven times over what he has been able to achieve in the land of the living. And my prayer for every one of us is that we will not be denied of what God has invested in us to add to what God has put in him to make his ministry blossom in the name of Jesus. What will I say about the woman of God, my mother in the Lord, the resident pastor of Trem Equator, Bishop Peace Okonkwo, I honor you, Mama, and my prayer has always been that your smile will not be taken from you. God will increase you in wisdom and enlarge your coast and cause you to see joy in this work in the name of Jesus. I salute every man and woman of God in the house. My prayer is that every one of us will be a blessing to this commission in the name of Jesus. What will I say about deacons and deaconesses and members in the house, those online, those on site? My prayer is that you be of eternal value to this work in the name of Jesus. You will not be a used to be. Everything fresh about you, you will see it in the land of the living. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, let's pray before we go into the word. Everlasting Father, we want to say thank you for another opportunity to fellowship around your word. The entrance of your word, as we have told ourselves, will always bring illumination into the hearts of men. So we humble ourselves and we open our hearts that your word will illuminate our hearts. That where you intend that our lives will be and reveal unto this earth in glory, none of us will, 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 will fail in that regard in the name of Jesus. Father, I hide myself behind the cross and I pray that Jesus Christ, you will take the glory in this service and touch every life, touch everyone at, under the sound of my voice. Let Jesus be glorified in our lives. And we declare that all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration is ascribed unto your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Like uh, Pastor Ima said earlier, if you were not in Tuesday service, you may be dilly-dallying about what we are going to continue today. But I will just do a recap. But I will also advise you to go to the YouTube. Trem... Uh, YouTube. You will see the details there. You can listen to it again because the journey that God is taking us is that every tremite and those who are connected to us will not fail to see the reward of the Lord in the year 2023. That is the essence of what the servant of God is doing with us so that at the end of the day, you will not say that what God packaged for you as a reward in the month of January eludes you. If it eluded anybody, it is a man or a woman that is not following fully. Like we told ourselves on Tuesday, uh, we, we, we read from Numbers 14.24, that a man had a different spirit in their own world where the spirit of God was not resident in human beings when they were not born again. But he had a different spirit and had followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land where to he went. So that means the promises that God has packed for you is all, you know, it is already done. All you need to do is to be following. Praise the name of the Lord. So let, let's, let's read uh, Psalm 16 from verse 5. There is something that the Holy Spirit just shared with me as I was about to come up now. Let's take it in the Passion Translation. He said, Yahweh, you alone are my inheritance. You are my prize, my pleasure, and my portion. You hold my destiny and its timing in your hands. You don't know when God wants to manifest his glory in your life. And you, it, all this happens as you begin to follow. As you begin to follow him, every bit of the glory that he has ordained for you becomes manifest. So you are my, my Yahweh. You alone are my inheritance. You are my prize, my pleasure, my portion. You hold my destiny and its timing in your hands. Next verse. Your pleasant path leads me to pleasant places. So as long as you are following him, his pleasant path will lead you into pleasant places. 
I am overwhelmed by the privileges that come with following you. The way you counsel me makes me praise you more. For your whispers in the night give me wisdom, showing me what to do next. Next verse. Because I set you, Yahweh, always close to me, my confidence will never be weakened. For I, will, for I experience your wraparound presence every moment. My heart and soul explode with joy, full of glory. Even my body will rest confident and secure. For you will not abandon me to the realm of death, nor will you allow your faithful one to experience corruption. Because of you, I know the path of life. As I taste the fullness of joy in your presence, at your right side, I experience divine pleasures forevermore. That is your portion in Jesus' name. The King James Version said, The Lord is my portion, my inheritance. He maintains my Lord. Praise God. That's verse 5, King James Version. Say, He maintains my Lord. Everything that God has packed for you, He is the one keeping it. That's why it's your shield and you're seeing great reward. It's the one keeping it. You don't have any business. All you need to do is just believe. What makes you to follow him fully is you have faith in him. You have trust in him. And I want us to please choir help us with this song. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his words, what a glory he shares on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still, and we all who will trust and obey, trust and obey, for the Lord. of his word what a glory he shares on our way while we do his goodwill he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey when you trust this God what makes you to follow him I told some people I said God called our father in the Lord and we've been following him all these years because we trust that God's hand is upon his life and that is the reason why in this year 2023 your reward will be great. Your reward will be grand. There are reasons the enemy wanted to take you out, but he did not succeed. So your reward will be great. Praise the name of the Lord. So go and listen to the previous teaching so that you can be able to flow in this next one. Then this one, we, we stopped at knowing God. We stopped at knowing God, but there are some certain critical things I want to remind us of. Number one, I said God is the first contact that man made when man was created. And the essence in man is God. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. If God did not breathe into the nursery of the, the created man, it would have just remained a carcass. But you and I, we are not carcass. What is making us to be alive today is God in you. And when you now look at the new dispensation where we are, Christ in you is the hope of glory. So you are a carrier of God's presence. You are a carrier of God's glory. You are a carrier of God's grace. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you are this carrier of God's glory, grace, and presence, then there is something unique about you. That is why we started talking about audience of one. Billions of people over the face of the earth, no two people's fingerprints are the same. When God created you and I, he did not take cancer from me to create you. He did not share the plan of your life with me, not share the plan of my life with you. But somehow, 
He created me a blessing to this commission. He created you a blessing to this commission. If you don't understand, read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16. You understand there is a place that God has ordained that you must cover in this work. And God has endowed you, blessed you, equipped you, invested in you, and that is why God kept pursuing us. What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visited him? Thou art made him a little lower than the angels, and you cry with glory and honor. So there is glory upon your life, there is honor upon your life. But all this glory and honor we are talking about, you may not understand it if you don't know God. You cannot know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, there is tendency that you will abuse your life and you will not understand where God is taking you. Praise the name of the Lord. So those are the things we shared with one another. And you must understand that God takes you so serious. He makes you his priority. That he wants in return for you to make him your focus. And as long as you focus on him, it will be difficult for you not to fulfill destiny. Praise the name of the Lord. Everyone that work with this God, they have testimony of a revelation of God. We said on Tuesday that Moses had a different revelation of God aside from the one that Abraham had. Abraham just knew God as the almighty God. Why Moses, God revealed himself to him as the Jehovah, I am that I am. He said, by Jehovah my name that I have not revealed myself to any man. So he revealed himself to, uh, to Moses as Jehovah, I am that I am. Anything you want me to be for you, I will be for you. So you can, Moses, if he had wanted to conclude that that is all about God, he would have just said, God is Jehovah Ocean Divider. That would have just been his own understanding of God. But God is bigger than that. God is inexhaustible. As you continue studying him, he keeps showing you different facets of himself, different side of God. Whatever you need God to be, he be to you. Praise the name of the Lord. He is everywhere. So who should you follow? And I say, that the radar or the compass with which you direct the affairs of your life determines how you will end in life. If I chose to use the radar of the world to be my compass in life, you will find out that when every other person is saying there is nothing, there is nothing, I will be sharing the same language with them. But the radar of my life, the compass of my life is the almighty God. And in our time, he has left with us the Holy Ghost. He has given us the Holy Spirit to direct and pilot the affairs of our lives. So that as you begin to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, as you begin to talk to him like human being, you find out that I, I, I shared example. I said, if I have a friend, like I said, Reverend Steve is my friend. If every day I go out with him, I keep quiet. I don't say anything to him. I'll tell you one of the things, two, two, two things that will happen is that the man will be frustrated in going out with me. So when you hear, grieve not the Holy Spirit, frustrate not the Holy Spirit, when you don't talk to him, you are grieving him. You are making him a redundant partner in your life. Meanwhile, he's the senior partner in your life. He is the one that Jesus Christ has said, he will show you all things and remind you of the things that have spoken to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So he even... Paul, in his own study, he emphatically said, the Spirit is the Lord now. And I took time to let people know that in the Christian faith, we don't have three gods. We have only one God. We say God is a revelation. He reveals himself in creation as the almighty God. In redemption, he reveals himself as Jesus Christ. And in regeneration, transformation of our life, making us to be like Jesus Christ, he reveals himself as the Holy Ghost. So don't play down on the Holy Spirit. Don't play down on him. Reference him. 
cut fellowship with him. Create space for him in your heart. Because Jesus Christ said that if you have known, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you have seen the Holy Spirit, you have seen the Father. You don't need to go to heaven again. He is already your channel to heaven. Praise God. So that is why when you want to work with the Lord, I took time to explain to us that if you don't catch a fresh revelation of God in your life, you'll be living in old time religion. I cited instance of numbers when people began to worship a brazen serpent. They thought that that is the only God that existed. When they need water, they will bring brazen serpent. When they need healing, they bring brazen serpent. Everything is about brazen serpent. And that is what we are seeing in our world today. Some people have built, you know, doctrine around oil. Some have built doctrine around handkerchief. Meanwhile, you need to cast a fresh revelation of God. God cannot be, you know, you can't say this is what God is going to do. The moment you begin to get to a point where you say, this is what God is going to do, that means it's not God. You are the one dictating it. God has 1,001 ways of doing one thing. Because he does not want the enemy to stop him in his tracks. He has 1,001 ways of outsmarting the devil in your life, in your business, in whatever you are involved in. So that is why you must create audience of one with him. And let me read Genesis chapter 14 from verse 16 to 21. I want to show you something there. A woman caught a revelation. She thought that she was going to die with her child. Hagar is her name. And it was when she knew that everything that she was doing she did not pray or seduce Abraham to have the child. If you look at instances in the Bible, when you are working with God, doing what is expected of you, you will never end in shame. So the woman at a point cast off the child and thought probably the child was going to die. Then God revealed himself to her. And she called the place Beer Lahai Rohi, Jehovah that sees. Jehovah that sees and liberates. So he, in her own understanding, this God sees and this God is alive. So if the woman had this understanding, there is another case in point. Abraham, he went to war. He knew that it was God that empowered him to be victorious. You would notice that before the king of Sodom met him, he had met Melchizedek. So that means he had had an encounter with God. And if you don't have understanding of the uniqueness that God has made you, you will find out that you want to be like every other person and you will lose your essence. So Abraham had one-on-one -on -one interaction with God. We don't have details of the schooling, the training that Abraham received. But one thing we know is that there is no human being that goes into the presence of God and remains the same. There is no man that has an encounter with God and remains the same. So Abraham understood that God is my shield. God is my exceeding great reward. So what is this thing that you are saying that I should take? For a man to be able to reason well eh, in this day and time of ours, then there must be a wisdom that comes from heaven that must be deposited in your heart. And you don't just get that wisdom on the surface. Diamond, you don't see it on the ground like that. Precious things, you don't see it on the ground like that. It's only meant for those who seek God. Pursuers of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So, 
when you look at what Abraham did, he has sought the face of the Lord. He has had an encounter with God. He has had fellowship with God. Then he was able now to tell man, this is the way life should be lived. He set a standard for you and I. There is something about you. There is something, that is why God is talking about audience of one. There is God's investment in you. Don't look down on yourself, no matter what you are going through. What you are going through does not determine. The bishop has told us, he said, when you look around, you'll be discouraged. When you look down, you'll be afraid. But when you look up, you have courage. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. You may not look like it. You don't have to look like it. But do you know God? Do you know God? Everyone that knows this God, they have understanding of the fact that their life will end well. That was why Abraham was quick to dismiss all those things. What is this thing? Praise the name of the Lord. So, to continue, I want us to look at the testimony of David in Psalm 37. I mean, Psalm 34, verse 7. Look at what David understood. He said, The angel of the Lord encamped around, round about them that fear him and delivered them. Next verse. He said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no one to them that fear him. Next verse. He said, The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Look at, he declared this because he had had a long fellowship with God. You remember Psalm 16 that I read earlier? He's talking about seeking God. He's talking about seeking the face of God. God knows you more. Your timing are in his hand. The timing of every glory that he wants to reveal, unleash through you is in his hand. So if it is not in your hand, that is why, thank God for People will say, I fasted, I did this, I can't go for you. But do you want to just believe and work with this God? You will find out that you will enjoy this Christianity stresslessly. You will see glory in every turn of the journey of your life. And this is actually what David understood when he said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The Yorubas will say, that there is no man that put honey in his mouth and sigh. Why? Because God is good. It tastes good. He said, even you may have energy, you may have technology, you may have everything going for you, but when God is your, is, is your pursuit in life, you will find out that young lions will suffer hunger. People in, in times of storm, in times of famine, they will be lacking. But those that are seeking God, God will be showing them places that are pleasant. Places that are pleasant. Places that are pleasant. That is why God has given us a revelation of himself in the year 2023 as the exceeding great reward. That is the general message to every one of us. But where is your own in that message? And this cannot happen unless you begin to catch a fresh revelation. If you carry the old rema into this new season, you find out that you'll be wondering, ah, why is this thing not working? Why am I not getting this? Why am I not getting that? Only for you to need to understand that uh, the anointing of yesterday has expired now. Go to God and take another one now. There is always fresh in his presence. Praise the name of the Lord. So that is what made Paul the apostle. In the book of Philippians chapter 3, if you start reading from verse 13, he said, he said brethren, I can't know myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Next verse. He said, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, mature, have understanding of God, 
let us be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Is it not only when you go close to him that he will reveal to you, my son, my daughter? No, no, look at this one, look at that one. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at Abraham. When Abraham missed it, God said, walk before me and be thou perfect. So God is not going to cast you away. What he gave you is eternal life. What, what he gave you is a prized possession. What he has in you is a prized investment. So he can't cast you away. You, went, you, 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 you gave your only begotten son to die for people and you will just cast them and trash them like that. He didn't trash Abraham. Look at what Abraham did. He said, oh Abraham, walk before me and be that perfect. So that is what Paul is telling us. If there is anything that you are otherwise minded, as long as you are, that's why the bishop said, anyone that is under the watershed of the word of God, that person, you can't write him or her off. Praise the name of the Lord. You can't write that person off. Praise the name of the Lord. So let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal this even unto you. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. How did you get to where you are? You have a constant fellowship and communion with him. You have a, a, a pattern. You know, don't let your business take it from you. Don't let be, you, I, I shared the other time from 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 to 3. He said, he that had this hope in him purify himself as Jesus Christ is pure. What is he telling you? Don't stain yourself with business of this life. Don't stain yourself with the world of this life. Don't taint the Christianity that is in your life. Don't reduce Jesus to material things. Praise the name of the Lord. There is something bigger than what you have in your possession that Jesus wants to release into your life. But if you now say, okay, this is all about Jesus, you find out that you won't catch a fresh revelation about Jesus Christ. There is something big. There is no way you are working with God. It's from glory to glory. Abraham taught Isaac how to work with God. And the Bible said Abraham, I mean, Isaac grew and was strong and became great and exceeding great. So the part of the just that shine, that shine brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. There is nothing that will make you to go down as a believer. It's upward mobile journey in faith. Praise the name of the Lord. So go back to that Philippians chapter 3. Verse 14. Next verse. Okay. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal this unto you. Next verse. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Next verse. Brethren, be ye followers of me, and mark them which walk so, as ye have us as an example. Praise ye the name of the Lord. So it is very important for you to understand what Paul the Apostle, he cried out. He cried that I may know him. Somebody who had an encounter with Jesus Christ. That means there is something fresh about the revelation of God in our lives. It's not, ah, I have no need. I, I was able to raise the dead yesterday. Is that all about life? I was able to raise the dead about, uh, let's, yesterday. There are greater things that God wants you to do. You have not you have not given, I mean, priests and thousands of people gave their heart to Jesus Christ and they all fall under anointing. There are greater glory. So you cannot just, you know, conclude that what you saw yesterday is all about God. God is inexhaustible. So that was why Paul was crying that I may know him. You would have said to yourself that, that, that he, well, he know him, huh? he has met him. You don't know him. It's fresh every day. It's new every day. As the day breaks forth, a new aspect. He said, he's the God of our salvation. He delivered us with his benefit. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the next thing we are going to look at is, which brings us to, you know, seeing God in your day-to-day -day activities. Seeing God in your day-to-day -day activities. You know, every day that breaks forth in the land of the living. It's a new day. If you look at today as yesterday, you want to do what you did yesterday today. But there is something fresh that God wants to reveal to you today. So that is why he said, he is the God of your salvation. He daily loaded us with his benefit. And those who walk with God, 
they were able to see God on a day-to-day -day basis in their lives. They were able to understand that every day that they go into the presence of God, there is an aspect of God that God reveals to them and change their understanding and make them to keep moving forward. God is, you know, revelation of God is progressive. You know, I told us, Abraham, he only knew God as the almighty God. And he leveraged on it. And things were happening for him. But when Moses was to do something more incredible than what Abraham did, so God had to reveal himself that I am Jehovah. I am that I am. And when he understood God as I am that I am, he did not just say God is ocean divider. He did not just say God is the man of war. He, if one day you need him to show up as the man of war, he will show up as the man of war. But if you only know him as ocean divider, when there is no ocean to divide, then you will be watching heaven. Praise God. But God is I am that I am. And that is why Jesus Christ concluded it by packaging the Holy Spirit in us to be for us. As long as we fellowship with him, it will be for us what he wants us to be for us. Praise the name of the Lord. So you now see every day of our lives, every moment, don't lose sight of the fact that God is with you. The Holy Spirit is in you. The things you are seeing around you, they are talking about the glory of God. They are revealing the glory of God. If you miss out on talking with the Holy Spirit, you'll find out that you will just watch some things pass you by and think as if those things are not important. In every little thing that God surrounds you with or allow you to come in contact with, there is something that God is saying to you. At times you come, a believer should not be careless. You should be diligent. And at times, don't assume you know everything. You just call the Holy Spirit. What is this about? You find out that the kind of knowledge that the Holy Spirit will bring you into will make you the one that will be dictating the pace in that area of business. Praise the name of the Lord. So there are people who have worked with God and they saw that even in good time and bad time, you know the story of Joseph. We all know the story of Joseph. Joseph was on his own. He had a vision. He had a dream. He did not cook up the dream. How was he able to get there? If you look at the life of Joseph, it was different among those other children. So that was why it was the choice of the father. So somehow, this child has learned to, you know, cultivate the presence of God. To the extent that God now began to reveal to him what he's going to use him to do. So this boy has mastered his work with God. Because he has mastered his work with God, you go back to Psalm 16 again. Because you work with him, because you are seeking him, he leads you in pleasant places. So if you have mastered your work with God, when you come to a situation that you cannot understand, you trust him. Joseph dreamt. The dream landed him in jail. But he still kept trusting God. And the Bible recorded that God was with him, even in prison. Hello? The Bible recorded that God was with him, even in prison. So that was why when the whole thing turned against him, and when the whole victory was eventually experienced, he was able to tell the brethren that God sent me to go and preserve life. You see now, no matter what a believer goes through, once you have perfected your work with God, you know you are following him. No matter what you are facing, no matter the storm, no matter the challenge, you are so confident, you are so secure that you know that God is about to use you to make a statement to the world. You remember David. David had his own experience. And he, read, he, he, he spoke a lot of things in the Psalms. One of it is that Psalm 16 that we are talking about. It's in Psalm 121. He said it. I will lift up my hands to the east from where come in my help. In Psalm 46, he said, He is my present help in time of trouble. Praise the name of the Lord. And in Psalm 37 verse 25, he made it clear that 
I have been young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaking nor a seed begging bread. Are you seeing it now? So for him to be able to say all these things is because there is a work he has embarked on with God. That when the period of trouble, challenge, storm came, he was so confident and secure in the fact that God is my shield. That I'm not going to die in this storm. My business is not going to pack up in this situation. That God is working out something for me. You remember Job also. Job maintained his work with God. Because he maintained his work with God and he had a testimony. He was able to tell human beings that I know my Redeemer liveth. He said, all the days of my life will I wait until my change comes. Why? Because he had hard work with God. So throughout the period that he was going through, he did not curse God. He did not change his confession with God. The wife was even still telling, her, telling him, are you still praising this God? Are you still worshiping? Curse him and die. So that was why he responded. Say, all the days of my life, will I wait until my change comes? Did his change come? Your own change will come in the name of Jesus. I said, your change will come in the name of Jesus. He is the same God. All that he is trying to draw your attention to, that challenge that came into your life, is trying to extract a fresh revelation of God from your life. Whatever challenge you are going through, whatever you are facing, whatever you are going through, oh, this God is good. We are in his hand. Our timing, the timing of the ex exhibition of the glory in our life is in his hand. And it is in following him. You may not know how turbulent the road may be. He won't tell you in advance. It was only Paul that I read in the Bible that he told Paul what he was going to go through for the kingdom's sake. It was only Paul. But every other person will not tell you details of what you are going to go through. Even Jesus, the captain of our salvation, he went through. But because he has shown us how to work with the Father, he has a regular habit of before the breaking of the day, he's in the presence of the Father. And all night at times, he's in the presence of the Father. And you notice that even when the Father announced him that this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased, the Bible said, the spirit drives him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Why? Because God knows that there is a training I'm taking my children through. When they are fully trained, they will comfort us gold. God wants you to comfort, he doesn't want you to be a specimen that is a, a, a ridicule to humanity. He wants you to be a pure gold. A treasure that by the time you are telling people your testimony, they know that this God can be trusted. Praise the name of the Lord. The fresh revelation of God. If you, God is not only a healer, He is also Jehovah Perazim, the Lord of breakthrough. He is still in the business of giving breakthrough. If you need breakthrough, He will give you breakthrough. Anything is possible. So whatever is facing you as a human being, is looking for a fresh revelation of God. He wants you to catch a fresh revelation of God. And that is why Peter, he had to tell us, admonish us, to learn to sanctify the Lord in our hearts. To know the answer we'll be able to give to everyone that asked us about our faith. Praise the name of the Lord. So the bottom line now is that all these things that we are sharing with one another is to draw your attention to the fact that this life you are living, you are not the owner. Your times and your seasons are in his hands. And there is a journey he has started with you. You see in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, say you are his workmanship created in Christ, the unto which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. We should walk in them. If you see it in message translation, can we have it in message translation? You, you will see that it is a different ball game. That even everything. Say, no, we neither make nor save ourselves. God does both the making and saving. 
he creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does. To join him in the work he does. He is our exceeding great. So, you know, he initiated the work and he pays the bill. He initiated the work and he pays the bill. So you cannot work in Zeni Bank and want to collect money from Assets Bank. Hello? So, you see all these things, billions of naira we are talking about, they are child's play to God. The moment you understand where he's taking you, Dick in Austin, you will understand that this God is good. You can never, he, he will never reduce you. He will always increase you more and more. That is the God we serve. He said, he creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does. The good work he has gotten ready for us to do. Work we had better be doing. Praise the name of the Lord. So the bottom line now is that he knows what he has chosen for every one of us. Thank God for the business you are doing. Thank God for anything that is giving you, you know, comfort in life. But God is able to give you much more comfort than that thing. So all that God is clamoring for in our lives is to understand that when you come to a period in your life, don't reduce it to because you have made mistakes, you have sinned, and before you know it, they are going for deliverance, they are going for this, they are going for that, and God will be looking at us. Did, look at Job. Did he commit any sin? Did God pass him through? Did Jesus Christ commit any sin? David was on his own now at the backside of the desert now. Now God go call him now. God went for him and made him king. The moment he was made king, voila, busted. Yes, on end, he was going through from wilderness to wilderness. But because he has maintained a work with God, so he did not curse God. Even when he had opportunity to kill Saul, did he kill Saul? Because there is a way God, you know, will change, transform your character. That even when the enemy is trying to bring out evil from you, he brings good out of you. Praise the name of the Lord. So that is what God is busy doing with our lives. But the bottom line is that many of us, we escape from his hands. We don't leave ourselves in his hands. We are too conscious of this pursuit and Jesus Christ has told us in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 it says seek ye first the kingdom of God and Israel all these other things shall be added unto you beloved God can give you a contract that will set to you for life I'm telling you the truth I lie not in the Holy Ghost he can give you a contract that will be bringing money for eternally to you and to your family there is nothing this God cannot do. So who do we seek after? Who do we pursue? What should be our pursuit? That is what we are telling ourselves. Don't be an old-time religion believer. Catch a fresh revelation of God. Do you know that God will only reveal the secret of himself to those who seek? And it is the fear of God that makes you to go and seek after God. And God will begin to expose to you fresh revelation. I remember when my pastor then in Tremfestak was preaching. He was teaching us about the Holy Ghost. He took it for almost five Sundays. And as he was talking, from that moment, I started talking to the Holy Spirit. I started talking to the Holy Spirit. And from there, I got to know that this thing is real. If you don't believe, you will not practice it. That was why Paul the Apostle was saying that we also having the same spirit of faith. We believe and so we speak. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. So the bottom line now, why we are bringing ourselves, you know, a lot of times we have deprived God of glory in our lives. The Bible said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou hast made him a little lower than him and crowned him with glory and honor. In Romans chapter 8, 
verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good. So if God has called you, if God has called you, he did not expect your life to end in shame. It's not possible. Go and listen to Tuesday's message. I took us through what Jeremiah did. Jeremiah, when God called, he said, before I formed you, I knew you from the womb. So before you were created, you also saw it in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Before you were created, there are some glorious things that God wants to be declared through you. Most of the time, we are the one depriving God of the manifestation of those glory. It's not about God. That's why Daddy will always tell us that everything is already done. So your duty now, in this year 2023, you have to have a quality time with God. The way, Dickiness, the way God will tell you may not be the way he will tell me. There is something unique about your work with God. I remember one time he told me that he wants us to be fellowshipping at 3 a.m. So by 3 a.m. I will wake up. At times I will just be reading the Bible. At times I will be singing. At times I will pray in tongues. He is the one who dictates how the fellowship will be. Because he is the one who, want, who knows what he wants to show me. At times he will tell me to go and read an information on the internet. This is God. He, you can't box God. You can't box him. He will come to you. Don't just be religious. Let the, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. You sense in your spirit, at this time, let us just sing praises. You find out that you sing that praises, miracle is taking place. Healing is taking place. Breakthrough is taking place. But if you now regiment yourself that, okay, if I wake up, all I do is this, 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 then you are your own now. What he wants to reveal to you, you have, you have caged him. But the bottom line now is that you wake up, you sense in your spirit to sing to your maker, to praise him. What will you ask him? The Holy Spirit said that we don't know what to pray for as we ought to pray for because God has given us the Holy Spirit to help us to make intercession according to the will of God. In groaning, we cannot be uttered by man. So, where your mind is going may not be where God is trying to lift you up. So that is why allow the Holy Spirit to help you. That in the year 2023, it shall be said concerning you that everything that heaven packed for you to reveal to you as a glory in your life, none of them elude you. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want us to stand to our feet. Begin to commit yourself into the hand of God. What is that thing? There are a lot of things that latch onto man. And that thing will be telling man that ah, you are not who God has made you. Of all such things must live your life. Whatever God has not put on you, is it a business or your, your achievement or your attainment? We are unto we have attained. Let us mind the same rule. What brought you to become a deacon or a deaconess? What made you to become a leader in the church? Then if you mind the same thing and bear the same, that means you, you will keep soaring higher and higher. There is no limit to the greatness that God will reveal through you. So pray for yourself. You will not be a used to be. You will not be stale in the presence of God. Freshness of God will be deposited through you. Greater glory will be unleashed through you as a vessel. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you. Lord, we are grateful to you, O God. We yield ourselves, O God, as a vessel in your hand. Lord, the journey you are taking us, you know it. The direction, O God, you know it. You have caught every one of us out for glory. Father, we pray, O Lord, from today, None of us will fail to walk in that path of glory. If there be any area of our life that we have been moving in the wrong direction, Holy Ghost, we yield to you. Do your work in our lives and let Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. We may be seated briefly. When you come face to face with God, every other thing loses value. It's only a man that is alive that can hold money. 
you have understanding that the money you are holding is God that put it in your hand. And God gave you strength to be able to hold it. So the least you can do is to appreciate this God. Let's bring out our offering this morning to appreciate this God. You can take advantage of the account details displayed on the screen. We have been told severally that we are not giving to get. We are already blessed. Audience of one catching a fresh revelation of who God is in your life. You will find out that this year we are going to operate in abundance. The kind we have never operated before in the world of trend. Money, money will answer you. It will answer to everything about your life. As you are thinking it, God is doing it. All these are because you have understanding that God is your source. God is your inheritance. God is your shield. And God is your provider. So let's bring out an offering. And if you have done so, lift it up before the Almighty God. I begin to appreciate him for the offering in your hand. Appreciate him for the wonderful things he has done. Father, we want to say thank you. Lord, we are grateful to you, O oh God. From the abundance that you have blessed us with, with a joyful heart, with a grateful heart, we are worshiping you, O oh Lord, this morning with this substance. We thank you, Lord, for accepting our person and accepting the offering in our hand. We thank you, Lord, because abundance is our portion in the land of the living. Lord, we thank you for you are a way maker. You will make way for us. And all the glory we ascribe unto your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.